What if Noble Six fought the Master Chief instead of Locke? That is the scenario this video is going to play through today. So, what if Noble Six managed to survive the fall of Reach and make his way back into Oni's shadows and once again becoming a headhunter? Taking Locke's place and pursuing the Master Chief during the events of Halo 5 and how would that play out? Well, today's video is going to cover exactly that. Before we start, I just want to point out that I've already actually made two videos explaining what I think would happen if Six survived. There is a part one and a part two to this hypothetical story, or fan fiction, whatever you want to call it, so go check it out, I'm sure you'll enjoy it. These two videos, and now including this one, are part of my What If playlist, which you can find by going directly to my channel. I'm hoping to add plenty of more What If videos just like these, so if you want to see more, the best thing to do is subscribe to the channel so you don't miss the next one. Also, I'm going to be making a Discord, um, so if anybody wants to put any of their theories or scenarios down, I'll check them out and maybe even put them in a video. I'm also going to be checking everybody's kind words in the comments as well, so if you're too lazy to check out the Discord, do just that, put all your theories in the comments, I'll read them. Uh, it really motivated me to make the next video, I can't believe how many comments I got. So, thanks. So, during the events of Halo 5, Agent Locke is sent by the Office of Naval Intelligence to hunt down the Master Chief and bring him in for disobeying a direct order. And the reason for Master Chief disobeying the order is because the UNSC wanted to send a different team to retrieve Cortana, because they knew how close Chief was to her. So when Chief refused to regroup back to the Infinity, Locke's team had a new objective. Added to their mission Stop Cortana was to bring in the Master Chief. And as we all know, this doesn't go to plan. And the fight between the two Spartans is disappointing to say the least. Deep down we all know that Chief would have ended Locke within seconds, but 343 didn't seem to like that idea. So, what if Noble Six went in Locke's place instead, if he survived? Continuing from my What If Six Survived videos, we are going to start off in 2558, and during the six year gap between the events of Reach and Now, Noble Six has been once again placed back into the Oni hands, and has been working in the shadows killing off many of the Covenant's higher ups such as elite generals and commanders, as well as search and destroy missions on a few Covenant corvettes. Six has a hyper lethal rating of when it comes to mowing down the Covenant. With many campaigns under his belt, he is noted to be the best of the best in terms of the Spartan Free class. And now with him having an extra six years experience in fighting and assassinating high ranked Covenant members, he is remarked as Oni's very own Grim Reaper. His once honoured title, Noble Six, has since been changed by the Office of Naval Intelligence. The Noble Six title will no longer be needed if he is to once again become a headhunter. If you didn't know what a headhunter was, a headhunter was a Spartan that were designed to kill and assassinate high ranking members of Covenant or Insurrectionists, normally working in teams of two, such as the two Spartan Free headhunters you're seeing on screen right now, known as Spartan Jonah B283 and Spartan Roland B210. A lot of headhunter teams are putting in missions just like this one, deep behind enemy lines, and either sabotage or assassinate high ranking Covenant members. The new call sign for Spartan B312 was now Reaper 1. The Spartan still honours the fallen members of Noble by carving the number 6 into the back of his helmet. But since we all know him as 6, I'm going to refer to him as just that so it doesn't confuse anybody. However, after all them campaigns against the Covenant that he had successfully completed, his biggest challenge was yet to come. Maybe even more difficult than the fall of Reach. Six is standing in a large dark room. In front of him is a raised semicircle shaped table, and at the head of a table a woman sits in a dark uniform, with Oni's insignia stitched into the uniform. Six instantly recognises her to be Admiral Seren Osman, the commander in chief of the Office of Naval Intelligence, and a former Spartan too herself. To the Admiral's left and right was two other Oni officers, but Six wasn't familiar with either of them. Spartan B312. We have called you here to say congratulations for taking out Jewel Umdama. You have not only done Oni a huge favour, but also the UNSC, and aiding them in the fight against the Covenant Remnants faction known as the Didax Hand. The war has taken a huge leap in coming closer to its end, thanks to you. But you're not just here for a thank you, Reaper One, and I imagine you've already guessed that. You're here because there is a far greater assignment for you. This one could depend on the fate of humanity, which is why I have called you in personally. It's an honour, Admiral. Six says with a slight head nod. Well, Spartan, now I must ask for something much more difficult from you. 
we had some Spartan 4s in mind, three of which recommended by the UNSC, but personally, I don't think they would be up to the task. Captain, please show him the briefing. The officer on the right of the Admiral speaks up. Spartan, you are assigned with stopping and bringing in Blue Team. A large blue hologram of Master Chief along with the Blue Team appears in the middle of the room. The Master Chief has complete control of Blue Team and has ordered them to follow him into retrieving Cortana himself. I'm sure you're aware of how dangerous this rampant AI is. Yes, sir. You will have complete freedom with choosing the equipment you need in taking down the Master Chief, so take whatever you feel is necessary to do so. The UNSC has given us their full support on the mission, and you will be posted alongside the UNSC Infinite. The Quartermaster Station there will be waiting with your requisitions for the assignment. You will also be given an Oni Pelican equipped with the best stealth technology Oni's engineers have to offer. The pilot is also an Oni agent. I don't want to risk the UNSC losing this expensive piece of technology. There's a Pelican waiting outside that will take you to the Infinite. Any questions? Negative, Captain. Then you are dismissed, Reaper 1. Admiral Osman speaks up. One last thing, Spartan. This is not an assassination assignment. I want this entire team unharmed. I've seen what you can do and I'm trusting you to get this done. You've got not only us but the UNSC watching too. Don't let either of us down. Good luck, Spartan. Understood, Admiral. Six turns and walks as a door opens in front of him. The light bleeds into the dark room from the illuminated corridor in front of him. Spartan slips his grey helmet back on and makes his way down the corridor towards his ride to the Infinity. The only captain turns to Admiral Osman. Are you sure you can do this assignment alone? One Spartan against four Spartan twos. The best soldiers humanity has to offer and you're sending one against four. Admiral Osman replies. Captain, that Spartan has made entire Covenant Corvettes disappear, and even wiped out some of the Covenant's Silent Shadow Special Operatives. There is nobody else that could do the job correctly. That Spartan has been sent on countless suicide missions even before the fall of Reach. Numbers are not everything, Captain. Besides, Agent Locke hasn't been a field agent for very long, let alone a Spartan 4. Reaper 1 will do just fine. Six is welcomed by the comms in his private quarters on the Infinity. Spartan B312, this is Commander Lasky. We are moving into position over the planet of Meridian. You have a window of 20 minutes before we are making another slip space jump back out of the system. It's too risky keeping the Infinity up here. If Cortana's down there, you better be quick. Lasky out. Six stands and dresses himself in the Mjolnir undersuit, making his way out of his room and down the corridor to find an elevator that will take him to the Quartermaster. Riding the elevator down, Six recalls what he requested from the Quartermaster to have ready for his assignment. One M60 Magnum Pistol. One M7 Silenced SMG. Two EMP Grenades. Four Armor Locking Restraints. Me only a grey Mark VII armor, designed around the Mark V Variety B model armor, and a special request for a Covenant camouflage unit. This request he wasn't too sure about. He did know that there were elites assigned here from the Arbiter personally, so if they were here, surely some of their weapons and equipment would be too. I'm sure they wouldn't mind if I borrowed just the one, Six thought to himself. The elevator came to a stop. The doors opened. The armory was full of UNSC personnel. Marines and officers, Spartan 4s, and ODST too. Spartan makes his way towards the closest Spartan configuration station. The engineers ask for his ID as well as his Spartan number. Six begins standing into the station when the engineer speaks up. Ah, one of them Oni agents. We don't get a lot of you types around here. The Spartan in Oni's tight grip is rare. I've only seen one over. Six says nothing as he waits for the engineer to finish fixing the armor around his undersuit. Yeah, you guys really don't talk much, do you? Six again stays silent as his upgraded Mark VII helmet is placed onto his head. With a slight hiss, the helmet becomes airtight and makes the armour and the Spartan one and the same. Where is the Quartermaster? Six asked as he slowly moved off the armour station. First time here? Down that corridor and to the left, can't miss it. Normally filled with armoured goons just like you. Six looks at the engineer, the engineer's face reflecting back at him off of the silver visor. The engineer uncomfortably states, Anyway, good luck, Spartan, and walks back towards the configuration console. 
Six makes his way towards the quartermaster before being stopped by a familiar voice. Six, is that you? Six turns to see a bald man in front of him, with a very noticeable tattoo across his face. It was June, Noble Free. It is you, Six. I knew it was. I thought the armour looked a lot like your old armour and I see you're back with Oni now too. June points to Six's armour where the Oni symbol is painted upon his left arm. I heard you escaped Reach when you delivered that AI and escorted that ship off the planet. Who would have thought that AI would eventually cause all this trouble though? June looks down in pain. I heard that Carter and Emile didn't make it. I wanted to find out how they went but I couldn't bring myself to check the reports. June looks back up towards Six and smiles once again. But I'm glad to see you well and working in the field still, Six. I'd love to talk some more with you, but I've got to train these Spartan Fours and show them how a real Spartan's made. <laughs> I'll see you around, Six. Good luck on your assignment. June jogs back to his trainees. It's strange seeing him without his armor, Six thought. But he was just happy he was alive more than anything. Six moves along to the Quartermaster. The Quartermaster is sat down at a desk. Behind him are shelves upon shelves of equipment waiting to be given to the correct soldier. Every shelf contained an instrument of war. Six speaks to the Quartermaster. Oni, Spartan B312, codename Reaper 1. Reaper 1, Reaper 1, Reaper 1. He mutters to himself as he scrolls through the console. Aha! Here you are. Okay, let me just go get your equipment from the back. The Quartermaster walks halfway down the corridor and lifts out a green crate from under one of the shelves. He rolls it down using a pallet truck towards Six. Here you are, sir. Six pops the lid off on the green metal case to find all the gear he needed, even the clocking device he asked for. He was surprised he had even gotten what he requested, and then remembered who he was hunting. They would have probably given him a full fire team if he asked for one, but Six prefers to work alone. Although during his time with Noble Team, he did start to get comfortable, but that's now all a distant memory that he'd rather try not to think about too hard. Six attaches his weapons and equipment to his Mjolnir armor and makes his way towards the pelican he had requisitioned. The pilot was already in the cockpit waiting for the green light to fly out of the docking bay. This pelican was no ordinary dropship. It was one of Oni's prototype birds. This ship was capable of stealth technology in line with the Covenant's elite Silent Shadow Special Optech. Oni sure know how to treat an agent, Six thought to himself. You have permission to leave, pilot. Start her up, Six says. Affirmative. And the pilot pulls the lever raising the pelican and flying it into Meridian's atmosphere. Compared to a standard pelican, this vehicle was armed to the teeth, inside and out. Two gorse turrets that could be deployed straight out of the passenger bay roof to shoot any oncoming flyers. As well as its active camouflage stealth technology, this thing has about as much armour as Mjolnir's armour systems. The pelican is the true predator in the sky. Six is dropped onto a cliff, facing what looks to be a small town full of survivors from the planet's glassing from previous years ago. The pelican then ascends back into the atmosphere again as quickly as it's made its way down here. I think sure is fast, Six thought to himself. According to the intel the Admiral had given Six, the Master Chief was last tracked making his way to this planet with the rest of Blue Team. Why they are here is unclear, but if they're after Cortana, maybe she's here too. Six makes a quick sweep of his SMG, scanning movement before slinging it back into his back. Besides the small town, the rocky planet is barren of life. Looking down, Six sees Blue Team's Prowler stationed outside what looked to be a mine. The Spartan leaps down the cliff, landing on an almost vertical surface and sliding the rest of the way down. Reaching the Prowler, he moves inside, SMG on point for anyone that may come in line with his sights. The Prowler was predictively empty, except for the Prowler's medical equipment and survival equipment stored in the emergency hatch. Checking the center terminal inside the Prowler shows that the Prowler landed about an hour ago. Looks like I've got some catching up to do, Six thinks to himself. Turning around, Six starts a steady jog into the mine. A steady jog for a Spartan is a full on sprint for even some of the fastest marines. Making his way inside, Six begins to realize that the mine is no normal mine. Forerunner constructor sentinels whiz past him as they too make their way further into the mine, heading towards pillars of metal and light floating in the air. These structures were a forerunner design to be sure. Moving through the mine leads to many different platforms, creating a maze of pillars and floating platforms alike. 
6 uses his armour's tracking technology to pick up any UNSC IFF tags. After a few seconds it pings and in the corner of his hood, 4 tags appear. All Spartan tags. The tags appear in a list. Spartan 058. Spartan 087. Spartan 104. And at the top, Spartan 117. His Targus was in here. And only 500 metres away. Behind a door with what looks to be like large egg shaped pods surrounding that door. Moving across a light bridge and up to the door, one of the egg shaped structures moves. As Six moves even closer, the shape lets out what looks to be a human shaped figure, but a foreigner design. Six points his SMG at the creature as it falls out of the pod and down to the ground, creating a slight cloud of rocky dust blooming around the sentient being. It stands in the way, staring at the Spartan. Who are you? Six says curiously. I am Warden Eternal. You are not permitted to pass this door. I need to reach the other humans you let through, Six says while lowering his weapon. The other humans have been given permission by Cortana. You have not. Vacate this shelter now. The Warden slams his fist down to the ground and Six is blasted across the shelter. Six recovers and gets back onto his feet immediately. The Warden laughs. This human is weak. Six notices a forerunner insurrection cannon behind the Warden and a forerunner gun rack. The Warden shouts once again, LEAVE! and begins running towards the Spartan with a large sword in its hand of forerunner design. Six runs towards the Warden as well, weapons holstered apart from one of his AMP grenades. The Warden slices through the air with his sword and Six slides in perfect timing under the slash and between the Warden's legs. The Warden turns to see Six stood there picking up the incinerator. Before he can strike again, a blast between his feet goes off, momentarily knocking the Warden to one of his knees. The Warden looks up to see Six firing the incineration cannon in his face. The Warden screams and teleports to a higher platform. Perhaps you are stronger than I thought, human. Shame you won't live to use that strength. The Warden then fires a blast of hard light from his now scorched faceplate. The Spartan dives to his left, just in time. But just as he recovers back to his feet, another bolt is fired and hits him dead in the chest, taking his energy shields and knocking him over the barrier behind him. The Warden drops back down to the Spartan's level and begins to walk over to the barrier that the Spartan was lying behind. The Warden once again laughs in confidence as he slowly walks over. I expected this fight to be longer with the fight you have just given me, the Warden chuckles. The Warden thrusts his sword through the barrier at ridiculous speeds, and the barrier disintegrates. The Warden looks past the burnt particles floating away from a once solid barrier, he sees no sign of the Spartan. The Warden looks for another moment before feeling a massive blast to his right leg. The Warden screams. As if from nowhere, Six deactivates his active camo and jumps onto the Warden's back, pulling out a Kirkery knife and stabbing it deep into the Warden's glowing black. Six then pushes off the Warden's back, backflipping away from the now imploding Warden Eternal. The Warden screams terrifying cries of pain as he eventually implodes out of existence. Six moves back over to the now empty blast site where the Warden was once and picked up his bur borrowed Kirkery knife. Looking at it reminds himself of the Spartan that once carried this weapon on his shoulder. He slots the knife back into his sheath strapped across his torso plating. The door once blocked is now open. Better keep going, don't want to miss them, Six thinks to himself. Wow, I cannot believe how many comments and views I have got on my videos, that is insane. I just keep looking at it and I just cannot believe it, I'm on 198 subscribers right now. That is nuts. Um, thank you all, seriously, I'm just shocked all your comments are amazing as well I, i'm so I'm, I'm just shocked completely um yeah i uh, i actually came up with an idea um for making another video um i enjoy writing the videos but i don't really enjoy uh voicing them out i don't exactly have the best voice um it's, it's not great <laughs> so i was thinking 
that maybe if I open up a Discord like I said I would, uh, which I'll probably put in the description, and maybe start to talk with some people, maybe I could then get people to help me out with the voice acting as well. Get some like voice clips from you know, all the people who enjoy watching these videos. And then I could stick your voice clips into the video for, say, certain characters, and maybe it'll just liven the video up a little bit. Plus, it's dreadful to listen to myself when it comes to editing, so that would be a huge help. Anyway, um, thanks, everyone. Peace.